Hey everyone, so this is a thing. <laughs> Who knew, you know, everybody coming together to not, you know, nuclear annihilate everybody to, you know, human unity was a bad thing and a globalist message. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. So yeah, the author is Jan Smith, who's the Paris correspondent for LifeSide News. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Was Raya written before the COVID-19 crisis with extraordinary foresight? The foresight of Bring a fracture world together <laughs> that apparently didn't exist before COVID nineteen. God damn. Okay. Um, or was it adjusted to fit the present narrative that insists that the world must unite against the invisible enemy or else be doomed? It's not really invisible. I mean, technically it is because you can't see the fucking virus. We can see the effect of the fucking virus. Like how we also can't necessarily see the climate. But we can see how it's face-fucking everybody. And again, I, I thought Raya was like about bringing the human race together. Not fighting and killing each other. Apparently that's globalist messaging. Ugh. So yeah, Ryan the Last Dragon, Disney's latest full-length animated film, looks in many ways like a liberal propagandist dream come true. Set in Southeast Asia, I thought it was set in some fucking, like, it has Southeast Asian influence, but I didn't think it took place on fucking Earth. You know, because dragons exist? It's a tale of a lone warrior princess, Raya, whose mission is to find the last dragon who alone can save the entire world from its evil, elusive enemy, the shapeless, shapeless cloud-like Drun monsters that she calls a mindless plague. Because a fucking hive mind or some, some fucking enemy that is insidious and drives people apart, like, you know, class... Or fucking bigotry. You know, apparently that's fucking... Uh, you know, everything's fucking literal. In a way, Raya personifies China, but not an aggressive China seeking dominance over the world. That's America's job to be, you know, trying to control every fucking buddy. Her message is one of unity and tolerance, of trust and faith in humanity in difficult times. Which again, is globalist fucking messaging. Make sure that everybody doesn't fucking kill each other. It's a bad message. Does this ring a bell in these times of COVID? You're fucking... <laughs> like, you're hearing bells that aren't fucking ringing. Like, your, your bell got fucking rung. But mm, fucking... <clears throat> it should... Because Ryan and the Lost Dragon is a didactic film. A story with a moral. Presumably, it's also better than the Bible, because the Bible's fucking boring as dog piss. <laughs> like, I've literally tried to read the fucking Bible, and it's a bunch of fucking incest and miracles. And the miracles are fucking boring. Like, water to wine and multiplying fish. A brief synopsis is necessary in order to understand how the message works. Rai is born into a land fraught with division and rivalry among five tribes. Did you actually want, like, I thought you guys fucking hated Disney because they fired Gina Carano for being a fucking shit canoe, but you're watching this fucking Disney movie? Rai is born into a uh, once per prosperous and united Kumandra 500 years ago with a dwelling place of dragons who lived in perfect harmony with humans. It brought them water, rain, and peace. <laughs> J 
isn't, you know, once peaceful, now discordant, isn't that like the fucking Bible? Isn't that the, literally the story of fucking Babel? Like, they were trying to build a tower to God, and God was like, can't have this shit, they all know I'm a fucking fraud. So he just, you know, fucking made them unable to talk to each other. Because, you know, that's a fucking message you, you know, without loving each other, you know. It's like, don't, don't try to look at God. That's bad. <clears throat> but hatred and envy among humans created the Drun that brought division and destruction to dragons and humans alike. Yeah. Because gen humans generally are just a fucking pox. Um, the latter turned into statues of sand or stone. The former were virtually made extinct by the Malefic Maleficent Cloud. Because apparently miasma fucking... It means COVID. It's not like miasma is a fucking concept that's been in pretty much every fucking culture. Only one survived, thanks to the other dragon's sacrifice, who put their magic together to create a crystal orb, the dragon gem where Sisu, the last dragon, would remain. 500, 500 years on, the hatred among humans and their tribes reawakened the Drun, and Raya, the princess whose father made her the guardian of the dragon, must save her kingdom now that the gem has been broken and dispersed among the rival tribes. She will do this she will do by finally joining forces with her arch enemy. Namadi, a princess from another tribe. Again, fucking coming together, fighting a common enemy, globalist messaging. Their mutual trust and cooperation ultimately ensure the happy end. Happy end? Happy ending? I, I guess happy ending does have a kind of awful, awful connotation. In which dragons will at least, at last be honored and Kumandra united. There are many obvious solutions to contemporary issues and so-called solutions. Again, it's not like these are playing on fucking myths and legends from human history. Fucking. Oh, god damn. Okay. Um... Before coming back to those, however, the first disturbing element of this new Disney film is its portraying of dragons as good creatures, helpers of humanity, and saviors of the world. I mean, just because Judeo-Christian fucking Europeans didn't like fucking dragons, like, doesn't mean that other cultures don't like fucking dragons. It's like, your Eurocentric bullshit is just right there. In an important book, Landscape with Dragons, Michael D. O'Brien identified an increasing and worrisome trend in children's literature, the bonifying of symbols of evil, among whom dragons play a leading role as images of the devil in so many countries who are Christian, and especially in Christian countries because fucking, you know, the serpent and all this other shit, who are portrayed as good, kind, and unjustly rejected. Again, Apparently, no good dragons have ever existed in lore or anything ever. The role of traditional symbols is not trivial. You're getting really pissed off about good dragons. Where were you when fucking how to train a dragon was a fucking thing? They express profound truths, and turning them upside down has consequences. O'Brien shows that, in many contemporary children's books, the use of disobedience, trickery, magic, and other unacceptable evils are necessary to their to the own ultimate uh, success or victory of the book's main characters. Because apparently fighting against undue authority is, you know, fucking... It's not like the Founding Fathers fought against what they thought was fucking undue authority. <clears throat> Who were also very much slave-owning pieces of shit. The Harry Potter books are a good example of this. Really it's funny because conservatives love J.K. Rowling because she shits on trans people, but now nah, fucking spooky. You want to... Fuck me. You want to talk about some 
You want to talk about a wizard named Harry that shits on some fucking, like, openly shits on some shit? <laughs> fucking Harry Dresden. The Dresden Files. Not, number one, there is a group called the Nurians that are demons that are contained within the 30 pieces of silver that Judas got for betraying Jesus Christ. Also, angels are a thing in the book, and they very much are wet work people. Or at least the archangels are. Uh, a, uh, Uriel is very much a big part of the story. <clears throat> um, also, Santa Claus is also Odin, which is kind of a thing. Uh, <laughs> which is just obvious. Um, there, are eight, there are like seven or so, probably like more different kind of fucking um, uh, like vampires. There are like four different versions of werewolves. Uh, pagan gods actually exist, like Odin's real, Valkyries are real, uh, Skinwalkers are real, uh, fucking, how many other fucking things? Uh, I'm pretty sure they shit on God, too. Although, there's good, you know, the Knights of the Nail, or the Knights of the... I forgot what the fuck they're called. They're like the they're they're holy knights, and their swords are all linked to the three nails used to crucify Jesus, which is a thing. Um, one of those swords is a katana that gets turned into basically a lightsaber by a Jewish guy. No, I'm not making that up. <laughs> also linked to Star Wars. Anyway. Also, necromancy is a part of it. Anyway, sorry. Also, fairies exist in that universe. The pervasiveness of good dragons in present day. Are there any good dragons in fucking like? There's, I guess, there's no outright evil dragons, but dragons are kind of just in Harry Potter are just seen as kind of a force of nature that can be tamed, more or less. Uh, children is surely a sign of this inverted culture again. Also, we this this is a cool story. Uh, Michael is a character in Harry Dresden, the Dresden Files. Um, is one of the knights of the cross. That's what the knights of the cross. Uh, literally, um, fought a dragon to get his wife. Before they were married. They, I think they were dating and she got captured. But she was also a witch. But he was a fucking holy knight. And defeated a dragon. Also dragons are shapeshifters in this universe. And are super fucking powerful. And there was a dragon that's dressed up like a fucking uh, Roman legi legionnaire. Who literally just had like Roman legionnaire uh, armor. Because he, that, that he's been around that long. And uh, put a cigarette in his mouth so the smoking wasn't conspicuous because the dude was, you know, fucking smoking from the mouth. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Although I guess technically that's not a kid's. You can introduce I had like a teenager to Harry Dresden. Um. But deliberately turns the archetype of danger, greed, and destruction into a misunderstood, persecuted victim of false virtue signalers. I mean, there's only what? I can only think of one dragon that was. I guess dragons are maybe known for hoarding gold, but like, when I think of a greedy dragon, I think of Fafnir, and I don't think he started off as a dragon. He started off as like a dwarf. Who became a fucking dragon? Or some shit like that? He's in Smite. Um, anyway. Um, also, the archetype of danger. Like, 
most things that are like you know scary 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 like in real life like yeah there are plenty of people who are like scary but aren't necessarily dangerous like the mo- people who you probably would be like i would let my child be with them would probably rape your child and that's a fucking catholic priest chances are a catholic priest you know is a child molester or just a rapist in general what the fuck is that much the same argument was used in another disturbing children's film, Maleficent, Princess of Evil. Where fallen angels were relegated to under-earthly caverns after being unjustly rejected by mankind. It's funny that you're bringing up Maleficent, but whatever. Oh, where the fuck is my thing? Sorry. Um... Well, Maleficent herself turned out to be a necessary collaborator for saving the environment. I mean, they were just, like, kind of fleshing out uh, was it Sleeping Beauty's villain? And just kind of, like, humanizing a villain, which... You do it in a bad way, you get fucking Joker... You do it well, you can you get like Eric Killmonger. <clears throat> and why? I see Sue the Dragon is a cute, furry, but horned, because. Creature with a taste for rap music, <laughs> which is evil. And a self sacrificing nature, and the improbable source of good and peace. But the indoctrination does not end there. The choice of a female heroine without a love interest, Raya thrives on her friendship with Sisu and later Namari, is one of main themes. Strong women? Okay. Thus, female heroines triumph against masculine power politics and rivalry. Collective intelligence is another. Raya and the Last Dragon aims to show the necessity of cooperation against the common enemy. Which is, uh... Bad idea? Was Ryan written before the COVID-19 crisis with extraordinary foresight? Probably not. But we have been in lockdown for like two years, so... Or like a year and a half, so... Or was it just to fit the present narrative that insists that the world must unite against the invisible enemy or else be doomed? Again, a bunch of heroes coming together against an evil... Like a story that all this time. Whichever way, the result is the promotion of globalism. Men, in, uh, men must unite and abolish frontiers in order to save themselves and the planet. I mean... One, borders are fucking stupid, and... Original Sin is also present in a deformed way, with the story about peace and harmony being lost because humans turned against the, against dragons who give them water and rain, necessary material elements for life to prosper. Life as we know it. Nor is it unconceivable... It shouldn't be inconceivable. The reference to the Droom, evilly turning dragons and men into statues... Of stone is a wing to the transformation of Lot's wife into a pillar of salt when she turns back with nostalgia to the city of Sodom. What the fuck are you talking about? I fucking... Firstly, salt is not a fucking stone, nor is sand fucking salt, you dopey fuckstick. Like, so, so Ash turning to fucking stone after getting attacked by Mewtwo is a callback to Lot's fucking wife. All, all those fucking people Medusa turned to fucking stone, call them back to fucking Lot's wife. Fucking Jesus, tap dancing Christ. The environmental element is also present. Turning the desert into a fertile land is one of the outcomes Raya's heroism will obtain. I mean, considering that 
fucking there are plenty of places that actually have turned desert areas to you know like Las Vegas, a bunch of places in the fucking Middle East. As to the Chinese element, I mean South Asia fucking it was underscored earlier this month by the Loyola Phoenix, a student newspaper of Loyola University in Chicago. Ryan and the Last Dragon is a timely film that encourages global internal reflection on what it means to unite for the greater good. In the last year, the world has not, not only plagued by COVID-19, but a heightened anti-Asian ent- uh, sentiment, wrote Epiphany jo- uh, Jonakin? Johanikin? Uh, yeah, people who fucking spit at fucking Asian people. Also, Asian is a broader term than people think it is. People, when people say Asian, they think East Asian, not just the continent of you know Asia, which includes Israel and um, India and Pakistan, a bunch of other places. Although not yet announced as an official Disney princess, Rai doesn't have a male love interest like many of her predecessors. Rather, her sole ambition is to save her kingdom, sacrificing herself. Which, the main hindrance throughout her journey is the antagonist, Namari, a princess of another kingdom. The push and pull of these two characters represent the consequences of women settling in division instead of uniting for the greater good. The strong themes of trust and unity in this film couldn't have have come at a better time. Asian Americans have been facing greater levels of racism since the outbreak of COVID-19, as the person called it, you know, all the shit, to which uh, some cr- credit to former President Donald Trump, who called it the Kung Flu or Chinese virus. Hate crimes motivated by anti-Asian sentiment jumped 2,600% in New York from 2019 to 2020, according to the city records. The spike in attacks has led to the creation of the New York to, uh, uh, Police Department's Asian Hate Crime Task Force, it's really bad when a, the fucking NYPD has to, you know, fight this shit because the NYPD is a bunch of fucking shit. Uh, which has been under criticism by community members recently for its crime response. The other speaks of the film's lesson about believing in yourself and concludes that the film could be a possible catalyst for progressive conversation, which is terrible. Producer Osnat Schurer responded to questions about the film's meaning in much the same spirit. You look around the, at the world and you see that people are using our differences as a way to divide rather than to come together to embrace it, he said. Screen Rant wasn't even further in an interview, went for, even further in an interview with Riot directors Don Hall and Carlos Lopez Estrada, drawing a parallel between the film's message and Joe Biden's inauguration speech. The most fucking centrist do, you know, dog shit. Don Hall told Screen Rant, Obviously, the film was in development in different iterations for quite a while, i.e. development hell. <clears throat> and it felt like there was always a gravitational pull to the idea of unity, because it's a fucking, you know, strong story that's been told for animals. I think one of the issues that we saw with that is that it was almost too broad a theme. What we did is just ask the question, in order to achieve unity, who do you trust? His alter ego, Lopez Estrada, his, his alter ego? Alter ego? What the fuck? Like, are you saying that Lopez Estrada and Don Hall are the same person? Because alter ego is like... It's the same person, but going from like... We were jokingly... We were joking yesterday. Uh, Kui, uh, Nguyen, the movie's co-writer, did you write Biden's inauguration speech? Because so many of the ideas that he's talking about and the general philosophy that he's using to approach his new presidency is so in line with many of the things that we're trying to talk about in the movie. It's nice to know that we're going to be part of a hopefully very optimistic conversation. The interviewer comments, a key interaction in the trailer seems to underscore unity and is especially relevant to Raya and Sisu. Raya says the world is broken and she can't trust anyone, prompting Sisu to suggest it's broken because Raya and others don't trust anyone. The message is in a word. Whatever our cultural and other differences, it's human fraternity, of which we've been hearing rather a lot lately. And you're opposed to it because you're not racist? (laughs) Fucking. Okay. 
Do you, do you not see how people might think you're fucking racist? Anyway, peace out. Have a wonderful fucking day.